continue today with chapter 27. The Witnesses to Sin Pain demonstrates the body must be real. It is a loud, obscuring voice who shrieks with silence what the Holy Spirit says and keep his words from your awareness. Pain compels attention, drawing it away from him and focusing upon itself. His purpose is the same as pleasure, for they both are means to make the body real. What shares a common purpose is the same. This is the law of purpose, which unites all those who share in it with itself. Pleasure and pain are equally unreal, because their purpose cannot be achieved. Thus are they means for nothing where they have a goal without a meaning, and they share the lack of meaning which their purpose has. Sin shifts from pain to pleasure, and again to pain, for either witness is the same, and carries but one message. You are here within this body, and you can be hurt. You can have pleasure too, but only at the cost of pain. These witnesses are joined by many more. Each one seems different because it has a different name, and so it seems to answer to a different sound. Except for this, the witnesses of sin are all alike. Call pleasure pain, and it will hurt. Call pain a pleasure, and the pain behind the pleasure will be felt no more. Sin's witnesses but shift from name to name as one steps forward and another back. Yet which is foremost makes no difference. Sin's witness hear but the call of death. This body, purposeless within itself, holds all your memories and all your hopes. You use its eyes to see, its ears to hear, and let it tell you what it feels. It does not know. It tells you but the names you gave to it to use when you call forth the witnesses to its reality. You cannot choose among them which are real. For anyone you choose is like the rest. This name or that, but nothing more, you choose. You do not make a witness true, because you called him by truth's name. The truth is found in him, if it is truth he represents. And otherwise he lies, if you should call him by the holy name of God himself. God's witness sees no witnesses against the body. Neither does he hearken to the witnesses by other names that speak in other ways for its reality. He knows it is not real. For nothing could contain what you believe it holds within. Nor could it tell a part of God himself what it should feel and what its function is. Yet must he love whatever you hold dear, and for each witness to the body's death, he sends a witness to your life in him who knows no death. Each miracle he brings is witness that the body is not real. Its pains and pleasures does he heal alike, for all sin's witnesses do his replace. The miracle makes no distinctions in the names by which sin's witnesses are called. It merely proves that what they represent has no effects. And this it proves because its own effects have come to take their place. It matters not the name by which you called your suffering. It is no longer there. The one who brings the miracle perceives them all as one, 
and called by name of fear. As fear is witness unto death, so is the miracle the witness unto life. It is a witness no one can deny, for it is the effects of life it brings. The dying live, the dead arise, and pain has vanished. Yet a miracle speaks not but for itself, but what it represents. Love too has symbols in a world of sin. The miracle forgives because it stands for what is past, forgiveness, and is true. How foolish and insane it is to think a miracle is bound by laws that it came solely to undo. The laws of sin have different witnesses with different strengths, and they attest to different sufferings. Yet to the one who sends forth miracles to bless the world, a tiny stab of pain, a little worldly pleasure, and the throes of death itself are but a single sound, a call for healing, and a plaintive cry for help within a world of misery. It is their sameness that the miracle attests. It is their sameness that it proves. The laws that call them different are dissolved and shown as powerless. The purpose of a miracle is to accomplish this, and God himself has guaranteed the strength of miracles for what they witness to. Be you then witness to the miracle, and not the laws of sin. There is no need to suffer any more. But there is need that you be healed, because the suffering and sorrow of the world have made it deaf to its salvation and deliverance. The resurrection of the world awaits your healing and your happiness, that you may demonstrate the healing of the world. The holy instant will replace all sin if you but carry its effects with you and no one will elect to suffer more. What better function could you serve than this? Be healed that you may heal, and suffer not the laws of sin to be applied to you, and truth will be revealed to you who chose to let love's symbols take the place of sin. And from the workbook, Lesson number 215. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. Love is the way I walk in gratitude. The Holy Spirit is my only guide. He walks with me in love and I give thanks to him for showing me the way to go. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. Amen.